Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about mixing birds and other animals. This is a topic that's been covered in other videos, but I've never done a video exclusively on it and people keep asking me to do so. I think it's a really important topic because mixing birds and other animals should be done in a very cautious way and there are so many horror stories online about what can happen and often you won't see them because you'll just see the, the sort of staged videos and the staged photos which don't really present the reality of things. Now as you can imagine from the tone of my introduction, I'm not the biggest fan of mixing parrots and other animals, I think it's quite dangerous. You will see it most commonly with dogs and cats in the house. Um, everyone likes to keep dogs and cats, I really like them as well. But when you have parrots and dogs and cats, you do need to be very cautious. It can only take one small incident and you can have a, either a major vet bill or a much less pleasant result, which I'd rather not discuss openly, even though I probably should. But anyway. Um, a lot of people do do it sensibly, you know, they just have a bird room or they keep the dog or the cat like, locked up elsewhere or outside or closely supervised. I feel these are the best ways to do it. If you have your birds out and about, if you're closely supervising the dog, closely supervising the birds, it's not much of an issue. I think dogs are slightly less of an issue here. If you have a cat, I would suggest either having the birds out in their own room or having a cat elsewhere in the house because the cat is basically designed, it's a hunter, it's designed to hunt these little guys. It is instinctively programmed to attack them. And your cat may be pretty chill, you know, they may be pretty hungry, they may be a house cat, etc. You may have had no issues. Yeah, I've, I've seen that before where, you know, there's been a cat, it's been completely chill, really lovely animal. And then one day suddenly the budgie's just pulled its whiskers in the wrong way and it swiped it and then the budgie's gone. It's not a good result really. So it's just best to use common sense and be cautious. And I really, you know, I like to make like cute videos of these guys showing how bright they are, but I wouldn't do a video of these guys or another parrot mixing with a dog or a cat or another animal purely because I would never want to promote it, you know. It may look cute, it may be nice to see a very tolerant dog or cat, but all it takes is one incident. Now the other issue as well is actually damaging the dog or the cat. So you have a dog or a cat, you have a larger parrot such as a macaw, uh, maybe a cockatoo, too, and they may get on very well. Something may scare that macaw, an environmental factor outside the window, just like these guys just got scared by something, a crow flying by, and then that macaw will lash out. And that beak will do an awful lot of damage to your dog or a cat, you know, especially if you have just a really soft dog that just wants to play, all it takes is the wrong incident and you've got a really bad vet bill or worse again. It does, it was, works both ways, you know, obviously dogs and cats are the biggest threat to these little guys, but larger parrots can be a threat to other animals and it's really, really important to be ultra cautious when you're mixing them. It's also important as well, if you're a free flyer and you have dogs, uh, well, not really cats, I suppose, but you have a dog and you're taking it out for a walk and you have your free flying bird, that everything's closely supervised together. I've seen it, I've seen it work quite well, but again, generally you want to keep your dog on the lead while you're doing this. It's just, again, common sense. When you're talking about mixing parrots and other animals, for example, rodents or maybe reptiles, I think with reptiles it's a bit less of a risk. Um, but I still wouldn't have them out at the same time. It's just, it may be a lot less of a risk due to the way they behave and the general patterns, but it's still a risk. And some of the bacteria from certain reptiles' mouths are threatening enough to us, but they're even worse for our parrots. You know, you don't want any accidents happening. With rodents, again, you're not really gonna have the, the issue of a rodent like eating a parrot or trying to, but you do still have that potential risk if the parrot annoys it or pulls a, a whisker and it'll lash out or it'll, um, for, or even a rabbit, for example, will turn around, hop and kick. Again, it's a big issue. So it's just, I think I've said it multiple times, but just use your common sense. You know, it's not too difficult to work out that certain things are gonna be a problem. You know, having a parrot riding on top of a cat is a problem. Having a parrot on sitting on top of a rabbit is also a problem, especially if they're irritating the creature as well. So yeah, I mean, the gist of it is basically don't, honestly. But if you have to closely supervise and don't try and stage photos, I wouldn't even encourage interactions, honestly. If interactions happen by accident and they're passive, yeah, great, but yeah. I would also practice maybe reinforcing your other animals and your parrots for basically avoiding 
uh, interacting with each other, you know, or reinforcing the calm around each other. Because that's an active way you can sort of encourage them to be in the same space, but also not cause each other aggro. And that can be something, something as simple as offering positive reinforcement or attention for relaxing. And finally, in this kind of ranty video, be aware of how your animals interact when they're in the cage. For example, your parrot's in a cage, you have, again, a dog, more likely a cat, hassling your, bird, your birds in their cage. That can be very stressful, especially if you just introduce the parrot into the environment. You want everyone to be relaxed, you want everyone to have their safe space, and you preferably want to train your dog or a cat to avoid going on top of that cage through positive reinforcement, not through just uh, chewing them or being aggressive with it. So just avoid it and respect each other's spaces because these guys can get easily stressed. And it's the same with your parrots going into the dog's bed and you know pushing them out, that's no good either. So use some training to your advantage so everyone in the house can live peacefully and happily together and everyone has their own spaces and is enjoying it. So guys, that brings me to the end of the video. Summary is very simple. Use common sense, use training. Don't allow direct interactions, especially when there's huge size differences or predator and prey animals. It's not gonna end well. There's loads of videos showing it going wrong. So I'm not going to illustrate any of them here because it upsets me basically. So just please don't just buy that one video you see online saying, oh, it's completely fine. Just take it easy. So that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found my rant entertaining or useful if you're a bit worried, you know, and it reaffirms your practices. If you have any comments, happy to hear from you. But in the meantime, from two very active cockatiels and myself, take care and see you later.